what's happening? So, Arsenal have sacked Unai Emery. Um, what a mad way to start a Friday. And yeah, the manager, Medigo Round, is in full effect, really, isn't it? Obviously, I did a video the other week about Jose Mourinho coming in at Tottenham Hotspur, um, which I thought was weird um, that a club like Spurs would, would double down on someone like Jose and his brand of football and what have you. But now we've got Arsenal entering the job market once again, which is again weird having gone from a, basically an entire lifetime for some people of, of Arsene Wenger in the hot season now Unai Emery's gone you know in his second season that's right yeah I get it I get it with this one I, I, I got it with Tottenham as well to be fair but I do I do get it in this regard and I haven't really been paying attention uh, you know to that that kind of far down the league if I'm perfectly honest um, but I've got some interesting thoughts on it um, before I do just want to let you know this video is brought to you in partnership with One Football, the fantastic app on your phone who were the ones who basically told me uh, that Unai Emery, Emery had been sacked in this one they've got an article there on the five potential candidates uh, who could replace him fantastic app great stuff for, on, on match day centres and, and score updates and, and you know everything you really need to know around being a football fan and you can tailor it to your needs as well as you know whatever club you want to follow um, so yeah I'll link to that in the description underneath make sure you go and download it because it makes me look really really good who doesn't look really good in this is Unai Emery was he a good appointment in the first place I think the problem you've got and Manchester United have just gone through this is when you've had a guy in charge for so long you actually need a little bit of a palate cleanser as far as managers go Man United did this horrendously by trying to jump into a long-term bed situation with David Moyes when really they should have just given him a two or three year contract and said mm, see how see how you get on with a you know maybe with a low release clause or whatever. It's I always refer to it whenever people it's like people get out of long relationships. They get out of long relationships and so many people end up like engaged in the next six months to someone else and those managers very rarely go ahead and apologies if this is you right now and you've not clocked onto this. It's not gonna go well. It just doesn't go well. Relationships, relationships after super committed long-term relationships very rarely go well. If you're the exception to that, let me know in the comments and I'll apologise to you personally. Um, but no, I, I get it. And I was a bit shocked to see the condition of Arsenal, to be perfectly honest. You know, no wins in seven. They actually haven't won a Premier League game since the 6th of October when they beat Bournemouth 1-0 um, at home. That's a concern, you know. And, and I think, to be fair... There's a rebuilding job that needs to be done at Arsenal, and I'm not sure it was necessarily one that could be done in the number of windows that he's had available to him. Now, it might just be that he's the wrong guy, and again, we're having these conversations about Manchester United. I, there might well be these conversations about Spurs in the next uh, in the next two or three seasons as well. Arsene Wenger left left Arsenal in a not great position. I think it was what they did, and I said this at the time. What they did with Arsene Wenger was in bringing in Aubameyang and, and Mkhitaryan and tying Ezel down to a long-term contract. It was papering over the cracks. It was delivering like a bit of short-term razzmatazz to distract from the fact that there was major, hardcore surgery needed to be done at all levels of that squad. And the, maybe Unai Emery just hasn't been the man to deliver upon that kind of surgery because, look, I don't see how bringing David Luiz in was ever going to solve fragility at the back. You know, if you had to describe David Luiz as, as, as a player, you're not going to use, like sturdy or you know committed or defensively sound <laughs> tactically astute none of these none of these phrases apply to David Luiz and yet he's the guy who's been brought in at the heart at the heart of Arsenal fantastic football and mercurial talent probably better utilized as a DM um yeah all things that do suit David Luiz but I am um, yeah, I was a little shocked when you look at it, but it makes sense when you look at the timing of things because look at the December coming up for Arsenal right now. Very, very winnable fixtures. Norwich, Brighton, West Ham before they play Man City. Now, the Man City one, you, you, you can kind of write that off. But look, there's, there's nine points that Arsenal should be winning before they go into that game. Then you've got Everton and Bournemouth. They've already beaten Bournemouth once, albeit this is going to be away. And Everton, <laughs> I'll talk about Everton in a moment. And then after the Christmas period, you've got Chelsea. And then in, in, in the new year, you've got Manchester United. I'd say aside from Man City, who I would, look, you just largely write those three points off or as a learning experience or whatever. You've got a bunch of teams that Arsenal should be beating. And then you've got clubs who are 
rivals for Arsenal for the top four spaces. Like right now, Chelsea are in there. There's an eight point gap between Arsenal and Chelsea up in fourth at the moment, which is a major concern. But look, I think Chelsea are going to go through a sticky patch. And I think in terms of if you can get the right appointment in here, this December and the, obviously the first game in, in January as well is going to be make or break for Arsenal season. So it does make sense to get someone in. The only issue is the stuff that Freddie Lundberg's going to be having it on a short term basis. Now, look, he might turn out to be the absolute man. He might be able to come in and do like uh, what Solskjaer did at Manchester United last year. You know, have them all training, at, you know, outside the Highbury, outside that stand that's still there. That it, that's now flats and train in the gardens of the flats, and they'll bring and bring Arsene Wenger in and let him park in the boss's space. <laughs> maybe that'll do. Maybe that'll do the trick. I don't know. Um, but the, you know, if they've got the right man lined up, and this is why I wonder whether Spurs pulled the trigger and got Mourinho when they did, because they are entering into this period as well. They're a point. They're even a point behind Arsenal. Um, if they can get some solid results under the belt, you'll see them climb up the table quite rapidly, I feel. And and, and if, if Arsenal can get that right appointment, it wouldn't shock me to see. Look, Arsenal could very easily be in top four come, what, the 2nd or 3rd of January? It seems a stretch right now because of how poor the form is, but it's actually not outside the realms of possibility if you can get someone in. Now, that's not going to fix the frailties in the squad, but a different attitude, a different tactical approach or whatever. Someone like Rafa Benitez, example, I think Rafa could come in and get a much more, get much more than the sum of the parts at that side, as an example of that. And with Mourinho coming to the league, I think it's a perfect time, you know, to, you know, imagine the Rafa Mourinho war that went on in the in the mid noughties but uh, two clubs like that that genuinely hate each other that could be a gay possibility but you know they they need to gear themselves up get a couple of winnable fixtures under the under the belt sort of get some points on the board and then you start playing the teams that should be there or there about your level and, I, and look I think Chelsea are probably a level above at the moment but they're still they're still a young side they're still an inexperienced side and a lot of that plays and they've got an inexperienced manager as well, which could well count against them when the fixtures, fixtures start to come thick and fast in, in this period. So, on a surface, look, the fans weren't happy. Shock. <laughs> I don't mean to be, to be funny with that, you know, because I, I, I don't know what it's going to take at this point to make Arsenal fans happy. I think they just want a, a players and a manager who understands them and understands what they want. And look, all football fans ever want is to see players go out and, and, and really give their all in the shirt and have a consistent tactical plan that they can understand. So it makes sense. I, I, look, it, it, it does ultimately make sense. And I've got no great love for Unai Emery. I think he is a good manager, but I think there were warning signs over his management of players and what have you before he even, he even came to the club. The big issue, the knock-on effect of this is, what did this do to Everton? Because Everton are even worse. Everton are much worse than Tottenham Hotspur and they're much worse than Arsenal. Yet they have pretensions of being in the conversation alongside those clubs. They'll have looked at the, you know, a, a, a top six, top even top four, and gone, OK, turmoil, Everton can really kick on this season. And they absolutely haven't. And yet Marco Silva sits in a job. The fans are telling Bill Kenwright that they've had enough true blues. Um, and now Emery's gone. And they're going to go out and they're going to take another manager off the market, whether it's Benitez. It might look, it might, if it's Benitez, Everton are all of a sudden running out of guys they can turn to here. And I mean, you mentioned Eddie Howe on the on the on the Mourinho video the other week. You know, I don't. He could turn out to be the next great English manager, but he'll feel like a consolation prize if if Rafa Benitez gets snapped up. Mourinho's been snapped up, and if you see, I can't see any. Hmm. Could you see a really top quality manager? Maybe Ancelotti might jump ship at Napoli. It's going to cost a lot of money, but he might be the solution for Arsenal. But again, interesting thing, for, just a very interesting situation for Everton and, the, and maybe a little bit of indecision might cost them here. And, you know, it's one of those things that at the end of the night, you know, the whole, you know, when you leaving your cup and off until right at the end of the night and when the lights come on and you realise what, what you're kind of left with isn't quite maybe what you, you started off with when your ambitions, when you, you know, you're sprucing yourself up, you know, and brill cream in your hair before you left for the night out. Um, but no, probably, look, look, conclusive work by Arsenal, probably quite a brave thing to do in, ahead of a really, really busy schedule. You know, the top of the Europa League groups so are in decent hands in that regard. They're only, you know, a, a point behind fifth. It's going to be a bit of a stress to get top four, but if they're going to do it, now's absolutely the time to do it. And um, yeah, over to you, you know, people who appoint the next manager because it's a big decision to make. And over to you, Everton Football Club, and how do you react 
to this kind of thing as well. Let me know your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments below. And uh, also let you know, I've got a Patreon um, where I do extra bits and pieces, longer form content, Q and A's, more interaction with you guys. So if you want to have a bit more of a chat and see some behind the scenes photos, go to patreon.com forward slash Mitch. I'll uh, put a link right here on the end of the screen as well. Other than that, thank you very much, everyone. Have an amazing day and weekend.